this is the national receiver that I actually picked up from the state and the guy was a porter and they said it had never been on the air until by looking at this chassis. Hey everybody, N6TLU. I have a slight cold so my voice isn't as charismatic as it usually is. Today I was running on the 40 meter AM net talking to the guys like I always do. Running my Johnson Viking 2 and the National 183D. Well, after the net, I was over at the other bench working and just listening to the guys. All of a sudden, I noticed that the receive was cutting in and out. I could tell there was a big difference in signal intensity. So I came over here and I was watching the receiver, and the S meter was pegged, even though stations were intermittently coming in and out. I thought, well, that doesn't seem right. So I thought, I better shut it off and see if maybe I popped a tube. But before I could get my hand on that power switch, something, the sound of M80 went off, and smoke started coming out of the top of my receiver. So we're going to open up and see what happened, and hopefully it's not a national disaster. So first, we'll take a look under the hood. Now, the minute I raise this, I can smell the guts of a capacitor. You can just tell that burnt paper smell. But take a look at the chassis. This thing is super clean. I actually bought this from an estate, and they said the guy was a hoarder, and that this receiver had never been put on the air. Since it sat for so long, I did install a new filter cap. It does not look all swelled up, and I felt it, and it was not hot. So I hope that that didn't fail. Over in the corner is the little D-Lab XCU100 crystal calibrator. That plugs in this receiver and gives you that functionality, which is really nice, because it is kind of difficult to find where you're at on these front tuning knobs. It has push-pull 6v6 outputs, so this thing has just booming audio. All right, well, we're going to pop the bottom and see what's going on. Follow the smoke path. All right, you're seeing this as I see it. Should be interesting. I'm guessing we're going to see a big wad of paper that flew out of a capacitor. What do you think? Here we go. Hmm. Well, we can get a flashlight and we'll look in here closer. All right, scanning the bottom, I don't see signs of an explosion yet. But now, if you take a look down here, there is a fried resistor right there. Go into that big goofy looking bumblebee cap. So maybe that cap is shorted, but yet that would not have produced the sound that I heard. But if we go up here, take a look at this electrolytic cap. He burst and went kerpowy over the chassis. So that was the noise generator, but it looks like my National 183D needs a little bit more attention. Okay, so Mr. Bumblebee cap is definitely shorted. So here is ground, and here should be the high side, and you can see it's just like the other side. So the B plus comes in, this guy shorted, fried the resistor. I don't know the value of that resistor, I have to look it up in my manual, but the cap up top that blew up, that one's written right on the side. Well, here's the game plan. I looked up those components. The fried resistor is a 2.2K resistor, and then we have a 0.047 microfarad cap. So we'll replace those, and then top side, we're going to change out both of those electrolytics with 22 microfarad at 400 volts. The ones that are up there are 200, so we're going to give it a little more cushion. Okay, I've replaced all the components. Let's fire up the National. See if it receives. Look for smoke. Okay, the estimator's falling like it's supposed to. And look at there. All 
All right. The National lives on. All right, so the National 183D is temporarily repaired. I say that because if these capacitors are starting to short and cause problems with the circuits, it's time to change them, and there's a lot of them. So I will be scheduling a full cap job for this receiver because it is my go-to station. And after I get that done, then it will be a national treasure.